Hi, my name's Steve Walker from Promise Money and today I'm going to be talking about bridging finance, but specifically exit strategies. Now, when you're taking out bridging finance, there's going to be a reason for it. I'll come on to that in a moment, but you need to be taking out bridging finance with your end in mind. And the reason that's important is that bridging finance is a short term product. It's extended to last for a certain period of time, um, either because you're buying a house and you can't sell the one you've got and you haven't got the cash to do both. Um, or it could be for business purposes, refurbishing a property. But the key thing is that the lender is going to want to know how you're going to get out because they are lending to you for a short period of time and they don't want to be lending to you for any longer than that. And they don't want you to go into default, i.e. you go past that date, which then can incur you in penalties and them in hassle. So first, let's just talk about why you might be getting into bridging very briefly. Um, <clears throat> If you can get a long-term loan and get straight into that, sometimes that's the best thing to do because it's just one transaction. But if you're going to be getting into a bad long-term loan, you might want to go into bridging first. For example, I don't know, um, you might have some bad credit at the moment and you know if you get into a long-term loan, you're going to get a really rubbish deal, but that credit might disappear uh, off your credit search in six months' time, so a bridging loan now, and then refinancing might be a good idea. Um, you might be buying a property and you need to do some work on it, so a bridging loan now, you need to take that out because you need to do the work to get it lettable, but once it's lettable, then you'll convert to a buy-to-let mortgage. And those are some of the circumstances where you might bridge and then fin uh, refinance out of it. Um, but I think the important consideration uh, for, for any borrower is when you're looking at bridging finance, is it regulated or, regu or non-regulated? And regulated is basically where it's a loan secured on a property that um, you're, you are living in or you're going to live in or a close relative is going to live in, to you, uh, live in. And regulated loans generally are for a maximum of 12 months. So the lender has to evidence to itself and to the regulator that that loan's going to be done and dusted within 12 months. And if they can't, they, they're not going to lend because there's big penalties if they get it wrong. Um, for you, that means you've got a lender who's really looking after your interests. And if you've got a broker involved, who's a regulated broker, and they will be if they're selling you a regulated bridging loan, they've got to look after your interests as well and make sure that your plan works. So they're going to ask you more questions uh, and they're going to check things out and make sure it all works. And the reason they're going to do that is because if it doesn't work, there's, there's potentially costs involved for you as well. So the regulators trying to look after you. Sometimes they look after you a little bit too much, which takes away a little bit of choice, but that's the way it is. If it's an unregulated loan, then that could be on commercial property or a buy-to-let property that you've not lived in or you don't intend to live in or something like that. And those loans are available over a longer period of time. So you could be 18 months, two years, um, which gives you longer to exit and get your strategy right. But the lender is still going to want to know that you've got a decent strategy strategy to exit that loan. And if they don't want to know that, you've got to ask yourselves why. Uh, and is that because that um, when you, if you don't exit, you get into some very high fees that you didn't realise and they're making money off the back of you not having a good, strong, strong exit strategy. So you need to watch out for that. But what I would say is, whether it's a non-regulated loan or it's a regulated loan, it makes sense to go to a regulated broker because even though the product isn't regulated, they are. Therefore, they've got to have your interests at heart and shouldn't be hiding anything from you that, uh, that they shouldn't. Um, and even better, if they've got a regulated lender who will do, that, do a, a non-regulated product for you, that's great too because that lender is also regulated even though the product isn't. So what we're talking about there is the calibre of the broker and the calibre of the lender because they are regulated they've got a duty of care to you, which you might not necessarily get, you might, but you might not necessarily get from somebody who is unregulated because they haven't got the same uh, the, the same rules uh, that, that govern them. Um, they can be perhaps a little bit more cavalier. So get yourself a regulated broker and ask your regulated broker if there's a regulated product. Um, so coming back onto the exit now, what could your exit be? Um, if you're buying a house, um, and you've got another one you want, to, you, you want to move into a new house but you haven't sold your old one, you haven't got enough income to support, to support the mortgage on the existing one and the new one, therefore you go for a bridging loan. That's a classic example, regulated loan. Um, and your exit's going to come from the sale of the house that you're currently in. Um, that'll be paid off and then you move forward with the house that you've got. And it might be that the sale of this house means that the new house 
um, the bridging loan is paid off in total, or it could mean that the bridging loan is partially paid off and you need to get a mortgage. So in that case, you've got a sale of property and your exit is sale, but there's still a mortgage that you need to get on the new property going forward because the bridging loan, there might still be a little bit of it left. So where the exit is refinanced, it's really, really important that um, that you work out what that exit's going to be. And that means that your broker needs to then um, provide to the lender a decision in principle and do a bit of due diligence to make sure that there is actually an exit for you. Because let's say, and I'm sure this isn't the case, but let's say you've got loads and loads of bad credit uh, and you're selling this house and then you're reliant on a remortgage to exit. If you've got loads of bad credit, you might not be able to get a remortgage. So the broker has to set, check that out and the lender should be checking that out as well and should have that on file to say, yes, this all stacks up. So refinance is one exit, uh, sale is another. Sometimes you can have a combination of both. Um, inheritance, that could be one, that could be an exit. But bear in mind, the lenders, especially regulated lenders, when you say to them, this is my exit, they're going to say to you, prove it. And if you say, well, um, my grandparents have died and they're going to leave me some money, how do you know? Have you seen the, have you seen the will? Because they have to be sure that this exit is real. So if it's not real, it isn't really an exit, and that's going to give you a problem. So you need to sort of you, you need to crystallise that and be able to give them something that's real. Um, if you were to say, "All right, I'm going to get a bonus uh, in six months' time," okay, prove it. Um, I've got some shares that are going to uh, mature, uh, and I'm going to sell those uh, in six months' time. But I don't want to do it now because there's penalties to do so. Prove it. So your exit needs to be provable. That's really, really important. Um, I just want to now talk about what happens if you get it wrong. If you don't exit in the time that you need to, and in the case of a regulated bridging loan within 12 months, um, or in the case of a non-regulated bridging loan, well, you might, have, you might have agreed an 18 month or a two year period, but if you don't exit in time, there are a number of things can happen. Again, if you're with a regulated lender, Generally speaking, you know, that they're not going to repossess your house straight away. They're going to have conversations with you and say, right, OK, well, what's the problem? Maybe your sale's been delayed and they'll work with you on that. Some lenders will just say, OK, you now need to just keep paying the interest to us and we'll work with you until until you've, you've resolved whatever the delay is. Uh, some lenders might say, OK, well, you now need to take a new loan. So you've got to pay another fee. Um, to extend it and that could be one percent in some cases it might be two percent and we'll continue on the same terms or if interest rates have gone up they might be slightly different terms um, and they'll treat you they'll treat you well and they'll, they'll work with you on that um, but then I've just got to warn you about unregulated lenders there are some lenders out there who might have things in the small print where they say right well you've you've gone past the term of the loan that was agreed uh, therefore we're going to charge you a high penalty Therefore, we're going to increase the interest rate to a much higher rate. Um, and in some cases, I've even heard of lenders saying, we're going to increase the interest rate back to day one, which means if you'd been paying, and I'll just use a, a round number, if you'd been paying 1% for 12 months, and they say our default rate is now 3% because you've broken the agreement, you've not settled within 12 months, and we're gonna charge that default rate back to day one, that means you're paying an extra 2% on every month you've had so far. So if you're 12 months in, that's an extra 2% on the loan amount, plus going forward, 3%. Um, now that's an extreme example, but you need to be aware of it. You need to read the small print. You need to use a broker who's going to look at that for you. And if you can use a lender who's regulated, even better. So regulated lenders, regulated brokers, I think really, really important. Um, so key takeaway from this, bridging's a great product for certain people. Um, if you can get straight into a term loan, do so. So again, don't just go to a bridging specialist because they'll just offer you their best bridging loan. You need to go to a regulated broker who can look at all of the other options who can, and, 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 and let's say it's a commercial property. You might say, well, we can get you straight into a commercial term. Let's say it's residential, we might say, well, actually you thought there was a problem here, but we've got a lender over here which could get you straight into your regulated mortgage. So you don't know, need bridging. You've saved the fees on the bridging. Uh, you've saved that high interest on the bridging and here's the alternative which we can get you straight into. So they need to look at all of those options because bridging might not be a requirement. Don't assume it is just because somebody's told you you need to go for bridging. You make down the pub. He's not an expert, I don't think. So talk to a regulated broker. Uh, but a great product, 
Just know what you're getting into and make sure you've got a clear exit strategy in your own mind because you're going to need to evidence it. That's it for, for now. Uh, please do uh, subscribe to this video, uh, like this video so that other people get to see it because if you like it, apparently other people get to see it, which is great um, and that helps them. And do check out the rest of our videos on Promise Money YouTube. And for more information, go to promisemoney.co.uk where you'll find a lot of written information as well as more videos. That's it from me. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.